Now, my buddy Greg is an old chopper pilot, and he flies from Goose Bay, Labrador. Nobody knows just how long he's been at it, but I think that he once knew Igor, Sikorsky, I mean. He invented the things, and he gave all of mankind a lift. You'll know what I mean if you're arse over kittle crumpled up at the base of a cliff. Or you're out at the fish in that old butter dish with that motor that never worked right. The next thing you know, search and rescue's right over your head on a dark, stormy night. But now there's others involved in this tale of flight, a tale so amazing but true. They got four legs each, they're a bunch of hard tickets, and between them, they got five tails too. Five tough little crackies from the Labrador coast, oh, they're clever and awful agog. Spot one and Lucky, spot two, Nance and Ralph. But Ralph is the smartest of all. Ralph is their leader, and he's brown, just like Nance. Well, Lucky's as black as a pot. Spot one is white with brown spots here and there, and spot two, he doesn't have any spots. Williams Harbor, Labrador is their place of abode, where they live the dog's life to be sure. They're never tied on, they got the run of the town, every house, every stage, head, and store. Now, Ralph, I suppose, is partly retriever, and he loves going after the ducks. He'll go after just about anything that's gone, ball, sticks, or pond hockey pucks. But with all of the things that Ralph had retrieved, there was one thing he hadn't got yet. And being the hard-headed fellow he was, that's the one thing he just had to get. It was a big orange duck, and it made quite the racket whenever it came and pitched down. And it used to spit humans and then eat them again whenever it showed up in town. I'm having that, is what Ralphie would say every time that the thing would show up. The other dogs didn't think much of his chances, but Ralphie was one stubborn pup. So, one day in the spring, Greg was doing his thing and flying a trip to the coast. He was never a man to mind much where he went, but one place he disliked more than most, Williams Harbor, by name, was a bit of a pain because of that pack of wild dogs. Landings and takeoffs were always a hazard right up there with snowstorms and fogs. So here's my buddy Greg and he's trying to land surrounded by Ralph and his crew. They're jumping and snapping all around the outside while well, inside he turns the air blue. On the ground with no damage, he shuts down the engine and the rotor blades start to slow down with our five little friends sought up watching the tips of those blades as they go round and round. When the blades stop at last and the fun is all past, the crackies jump up and make off. Greg blows his stack because he knows they'll be back when it's time to start up and take off. Sure enough, right on cue, here comes Ralph and his crew as Greg starts his engine to leave. Five heads rotate at an increasing rate as the rotor blades come up to speed. Now set to depart and our poor pilot's heart is up in the back of his throat. With dogs jumping and leaping, the words that he's speaking are words that I can't really quote. Airborne at last with the danger all past, he starts to move forward to leave. And here I'll allow that what you'll hear now is something you might not believe. You see, the place where he parked was a nice level part, I guess 80 feet back from the shore. And where land meets sea is a nice drop, you see about 10 feet or more. As he flew towards that drop, the excitable lot of canines had their eyes on his chopper, and he suddenly sensed a chance for vengeance, in a way not entirely proper. Well, his plan worked just right, and a wonderful sight did our long-suffering pilot behold. Four dogs took the fall for the sins of them all into the salt water so cold. Greg let out a cheer as he flew through the air, and he watched the four dogs swim ashore. He'd had his revenge on the four-legged friends, and he figured he'd even the score. But wait now, you say. With four dogs in the bay, what happened to our other puppy? Both spots went in, Nance was soaked to the skin, and so was poor unlucky Lucky. Ah, but Ralph was too swift to go over that cliff. Yep, Ralph was both smarter and bolder. Greg was into his climb just at that time when he felt a light tap on his shoulder. A passenger was pointing out to the right float. This chopper had pontoons, you see. They're flat on the top with a reinforced spot that you stand on to get in or leave. Well, sir, such a sight did our pilot behold when he looked out the window that day. Twas Ralphie, stretched out on the top of the float. A bird dog, I guess you could say. The chopper was picking up speed at the time, and Ralph was hung on pretty tight, with his tongue flapping around at the back of his head like the tail at the back of a kite. With his ears flapping too as he took in the view through his eyes narrowed right down to slits, and his bushy old tail all astray in the gale, looking like a birch broom in the fits. Greg figured much faster would lead to disaster for his canine hitchhiker for sure, and of course that would mean one less dog on the team, and for Greg, less was better than more. 
But he's a soft-hearted guy as he roars around the sky and he really would not hurt a flea. So there just was no way he'd go faster that day and dump poor old Ralph in the sea. So he landed again and put off his new friend, who was glad to get back on the ground. The others were waiting and anticipating the story of Ralph, flying hound. And so now, my friends, I suppose I should end this tale of courage and pluck. Canine legend will say that Ralph won the day when he brought back that big orange duck. Thanks for watching this video. Eastling TV is the home of community content. Make sure you don't miss any of it by clicking subscribe here.